Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover our next problem on power optimization of a given digital circuit. So guys, if you have not subscribed this channel so far, I would request you to please subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So now let's get started. So friends, here we have a given circuit and we have to optimize this circuit for lower power consumption. So if we carefully analyze this circuit, we have three flip flops here. Let's call them flip flop one, flip flop two, and flip flop three. And if you see here, the output of flip flop three is basically used as a selection line for this particular mux. And the two input of this mux are nothing but the output from flip flop one and flip flop two. So if we analyze the functionality of this circuit, whenever the flip flop three output is zero, the output of flip flop one will be selected by the multiplexer. And whenever the output of flip flop 3 is 1, the output of flip flop 2 will be selected by this multiplexer. That means the output of flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 are never going to be used at the same time in the design. So now let's see how we can optimize this circuit for power consumption. So, friends, here is the modified circuit diagram, and now let's see the functionality of this circuit. So as discussed, this is our flip flop 1, this is our flip flop 2 and this is our flip flop 3. So now let's see both cases when the output of flip flop 3 is 0 and 1. So whenever the output of the flip flop 3 is 0, that means the output of flip flop 1 will be selected by the multiplexer. And in that particular case, we have to unget the clock for flip flop 1 and we have to get the clock for our flip flop 3. Two. So, assuming that it is an active high clock getter circuit, if our enable signal is low, that means the clock will be gated for our flip flop 2. And whenever our enable signal is high, so here the enable signal is nothing but our input signal for flip flop 3. So, whenever the enable signal is high, that means flip flop 2 output will be selected, and in that case, we have to unget the clock for flip flop 2 and we have to get the clock for our flip flop 1. So, to get the clock for flip flop 1, when the enable signal is high, we have to apply one extra node gate here, which will make sure that our clock getter will get the clock for our flip flop 1. So, guys, I hope this concept is clear. This is simple yet very important concept and clarifies how we can use the clock getter circuit in the design. Now, let's see what is the trade off. So, as you can see here, we have to use two extra clock gators and one note gate. So, definitely this modification will result in extra area of this circuit. So, guys, I hope each and every point of this problem is clear to you. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you very much.